Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be an overview video of four new mice that I just received. One literally one after the other. It's going to take me a long time to kind of digest these based on my assessment of my own performance. Uh, but I do want to give you guys a little bit of a view of how the unboxing experience is on all four of these and just the out of box build quality. I have the Glorious Model O Forge Red Fox Edition, the Cooler Master MM712, the Vancer Caster, and the Vancer Pollux. The Pollux being the only one on the table that is ergonomic, the other three being symmetrical. Let's get into it. So guys, the mouse that I want to start with first is the one that actually caught me by surprise was the Cooler Master MM712. If you're an MM711 lover and you were waiting for the wireless variant, I think they actually did a pretty damn good job with this so far. In terms of ranked performance last night on stream, I actually played very well with the mouse for my first time using it. And I do think that the shape definitely feels very reminiscent and spot on to the MM711. The mouse is designed after the MM711 shape. And again, I think they did a good job carrying it over uh, from that iteration. In terms of the overall unboxing experience, it actually is very similar to the MM711 with that form factor box that actually looks pretty good. All the information on the back of the box that you could possibly need, it is a 3370 sensor. I believe this time around they're actually using a better PCB. I didn't notice any latency issues last night. And it does have those optical switches which actually feel pretty damn good. Um, last night they felt very good. The click latency, I didn't notice any humanly noticeable issues. Everything about the mouse actually has been very enjoyable to use. And the coating actually almost reminds me of the Dave. So if you like the coating on the Dave, which is the Death Adder V3 from Razer, I think you're actually going to like the coating on this mouse. I don't find it to be something that um, is going to be widely disliked. I think that a lot of people are going to like the coating on the mouse personally. In terms of the scroll wheel, it has a less pronounced glide, uh, less pronounced steps. So if you like a faster feeling scroll wheel, I think you'll like the scroll wheel on the MM712. Mouse 3 is very easy to spam, which I like. I use it a lot for pinging in Apex Legends. Side flex on mouse 1 and mouse 2, literally almost non-existent. Nothing that I will feel in-game. And the great thing is that when you are holding down mouse 1 and mouse 2, there is no switch grind over uh, from the plastic over those switches. Everything feels very good. So when you're holding down mouse 1, you're holding down mouse 2, I don't feel any grinding whatsoever on these switches below. In terms of general build quality of the shell and my side buttons though, mouse 5 is actually quite damn good feeling. You get a nice pop, you guys can hear those switches, very tactile. And mouse 5 is actually very consistent, just the most minor amount of pre-travel and the most minor amount of post-travel. In terms of mouse 5, after the actuation of that switch, you can actually see that that side switch is kind of pushing into the shell. So if you are using a lot of force or you're just, you know, a guy who death grips his mouse and pushes the buttons very hard, you might have an issue of that feeling not the best going into the shell, but you kind of adapt and you learn to use less pressure on those side buttons and it actually feels very good. In terms of the bottom of the mouse, the skates actually are a little bit scratchy out of the box. But one of the things that is nice is that I'm almost positive these are the same size and shape as the MM711 skates. I ordered a pair from Lethal, so I will test to see if they are the same, but I'm fairly certain that they are. And the sensor placement is actually quite forward on the mouse and to me felt very good in game. So I'm enjoying the mouse so far and I will definitely let you guys know my final impressions when I do have the time to sit down and do a complete and total review of the MM712. And if we started with something that surprised us the most, we might as well move to something that did not very much so surprise me at all. The Glorious Model O Pro Wireless Red Fox colorway is exactly what I anticipated from Glorious. It is a kind of just general vanilla feeling, feeling mouse from Glorious. You take it out of the box, it is extremely reminiscent, of course, obviously of the Model O, it's the same shape, but it is reminiscent in build quality as well, which was not the best from the original Model O. Certainly not something that I felt was awful, unless you got a batch that was pretty, pretty rough. In terms of mouse one and mouse two, the switches feel fairly good for me. I don't have the rattle issue that other people had on Reddit, but I do have inconsistent feeling mouse one and mouse two. So my mouse one rebounds very quickly. My mouse two actually feels very hollow compared to mouse one, which is um, something I definitely noticed taking it out of the box. The scroll wheel feels like all other glorious mice. It actually feels pretty good. 
It's got pretty well-defined steps, and mouse 3 is very spammable. You have the DPI button on the top of the mouse, and the thing that I probably dislike the most are the side buttons. For this size mouse, the side buttons are actually pretty tiny, uh, but the biggest issue is the post travel. So there is definitely a little bit of pre-travel, but the side buttons actually go so far into the mouse, um, it actually feels like both of them are going to snap off uh, with quite a bit of pressure going inward to the mouse itself. And these side buttons aren't as tactile as the MM712, so you don't feel that switch actuation as much when you have headphones in compared to the MM712. And then you add that post travel and it's just not the most enjoyable experience if you use your side buttons a lot. In terms of the overall build quality, I have to push very, very hard on the sides to kind of get the mouse to buckle and flex a little bit. So the overall structural integrity seems okay. And pushing down on the bottom of the mouse, you can definitely see there is quite a bit of flex on the bottom shell. And then on the top shell, you can tell they made the plastic very thin because when you push down in one area, you can actually feel that plastic kind of flexing inward as well, um, which is obviously how they shaved off a lot of weight. These skates are what you expect from Glorious, definitely the same Glorious skates. They're not the best, they're not the worst, they're actually pretty good. I would not necessarily say that you would have to swap these. Um, I think they perform fine and I would probably only replace them after you wear them in. So generally speaking, it is very reminiscent to the quality of the Model O wireless. I wouldn't say it's like a direct upgrade to the Model O wireless, separate and apart from just the shaving off of the weight. Overall build quality just feels okay out of the box with those side buttons. But again, I will test the performance of the mouse to see if there are any other issues, how I play with it, whether or not that shaving off the weight makes the mouse just kind of go up in my tier list of mice. Uh, but overall, just the general performance that I've had so far on 800 DPI, it feels like the DPI is actually a little bit faster. So it, I feel just out of the box, a little bit of DPI deviation, um, but I definitely need to use it more and see how it affects my performance, if at all. And that takes us to the Vanser mice, the Caster and the Pollux. The unboxing experience is actually the best on this mouse, in my personal opinion. When you open the box, you actually are greeted with a pretty funny font that says, hey, and then you have the mouse as well as all of the goodies. You actually get the extension cable for the dongle and you actually get an arm sleeve. So they're giving you uh, quite a bit in the box and just a generally really well-received unboxing experience. The coating on both of these mice is actually really, really good. And this actually has a really cool pearl finish on the caster. I would say it kind of reminds me of the Gretza, but it seems to be a trimmed down version of the Gretza. It doesn't seem quite as meaty. And compared to the Final Mouse Starlight 12 Small, it's actually just a little bit bigger of a Starlight 12 Small. It feels really good in the hand. And I think a lot of people who enjoy the Starlight 12 Small are going to like the Vancer caster. I don't have a Gretza to directly compare the size to see how specifically it compares to the Gretza, but it definitely seems smaller than what I remember for the Gretza. The Pollux is a pretty interesting ergonomic mouse. The finish actually is very grippy as well on both of these mice. The switches feel great. The scroll wheel feels great. Mouse 3 is very spammable. Both have these small side buttons and they both have quite a bit of uh, post travel and that would be my only complaint. Otherwise, the build quality actually is very good on both of these mice. But the Pollux is very interesting in the sense that it is very different in my opinion than any other ergonomic mouse on the market that I've personally tried. It is somewhat kind of like a Ninjutsu Origin 1X and an Intellimouse 3.0, but very different in its own right. When you grip this, it almost just molds to your hand and your fingers almost feel as though they are just like molded to mouse one and mouse two. It feels very good in the hand and very different than anything that I am used to. And again, you can see both mice are quite small. Here is the Final Mouse Starlight 12 small for comparison. Um, so I would say that this is probably an ergonomic mouse that would fit for a lot of small to medium handed users. I have large hands and it even feels good to me. So I, so I think the Pollux is going to be great for just a wide array of people. Again, overall build quality is actually good. They use 3395 sensors and they are within the middle 50 gram ish mark. Both have very good weight balance. I didn't notice the weight to be too far forward, too far in the back. It feels pretty well distributed. And again, the build quality is great. The default skates kind of feel 
like thick BTL skates, maybe Tiger Ice-ish. Um, so the default skates to me do feel actually pretty solid. I do think you are getting a pretty good package here. But again, of course, I need to test this. I've got to get the software for the mice and kind of see how everything goes with that 3395 sensor. I did use the caster quite a bit last night as well. It's just a mouse that to me feels very good, especially if you are familiar uh, in terms of the feel of either the Starlight 12 Medium or Small, and you really enjoyed that. I think you'll like the caster, and the finish again just looks awesome. So guys, that is it for right now. I've got a heck load of a lot of testing to do on all four of these mice. This is actually probably the first time I've had one mouse come right after the other, after the other, after the other, so we do need to pump a lot of time into the four mice. I did just want to give you guys a general overview of how all four of these felt out of the box and how some of them feel so far in game. I hope that gave you guys some insight. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.